Hey everyone, welcome back to another video and in this video we are going to look into conditionals and loops in Java. So when we were learning about flowcharts, we saw that you take you know input and output, you do some processing and you have some conditions as well. We have already seen about input output, we have already seen a little bit about like processing like A is equal to A plus 1, you know C plus plus, B plus plus or whatever. If you are just starting out, do check out the links in the description, there is an entire java dsa playlist so this is a video a part of that and you can check out all the videos in that playlist the link is in the description make sure you like share and subscribe and let's get started so let me create a new project in idea we have done a tutorial on this already you can find the link in the description for the playlist i'm going to create a new project and i'm going to say next from command line like from the <clears throat> template and let me just create a now lecture number six which is conditions and loops code open com dot kunal finish pretty cool all right opening it up over here that looks good so let's first look at the conditions part okay the if conditions what are conditions now what is a condition okay let's see why would we require such things so basically let's say you want to you know in our previous example that uh, input a salary and if the salary is uh, greater than 10,000 give a bonus of 2,000 otherwise give a bonus of 1,000 so this check if this is this do this otherwise do this this is something we can do via if statements the syntax looks something like this by the way, this is the way you can add multi-line comments. So just slash star star slash everything you add in this will be a comment. So the the the, the thing that I'm trying to show you over here is the what is the syntax? How do we write a if statement? Syntax of if statements. Okay, so this is the syntax. You write if brackets boolean expression. So either true or false it should be like true or false okay and then the body whatever you want to do in it okay so if this condition is true do this and then there's another condition called else do this okay for example i can say something like um, you know int salary is equal to something like this then i can say if brackets i need a true or false expression an expression a statement that will give me either true or false so i can say if salary is greater than 10000 so this will definitely give me true or false salary will either be greater than 10000 or less than 10000 this will give me either true or false i can say salary is equal to salary plus 2000 rupees otherwise salary is equal to salary plus 1000 rupees and then in the end i can just say print the new salary this one is definitely greater than 10000 so it will be 226400 because salary sorry 227400 because greater than 10,000, it will do this. So in if and else in if and else condition, only one of these are going to run. Only one of these are going to run. You can put a debug pointer here. Try to debug this program, and you can see line by line how these things are working. So right now we are here. Salary is equal to this much. It's going to check. Hey, is 25,400 greater than 10,000? It's going to say yes, it is. Then it's going to go inside. Yes, it is. It went inside this if condition means it will not go inside this else condition. If and else, only one of these will execute. You can see this was not executed. New salary, input and uh, uh, sorry, exit out of the program. You can also add multiple else if statements in the same thing. So let's say you want to add something like um, multiple if else statements so let's say you want to add something like 
if the salary is you know greater than 10,000 then uh, salary is equal to salary plus 2000 you can also write it as salary plus equal to 2000 okay this is same as writing salary is equal to salary plus 2000 okay shortcut form otherwise if so you can see else if means i'm combining more than one else uh, sorry if conditions if salary is greater than 20000 give a bonus of let's say 3000 rupees in the end i will have else condition only okay in the end i will have else condition only okay cool so this else basically means if none of the above conditions are true then execute this condition else salary plus equal to 1000 okay that is a multiple if else statement so these are conditional like uh, you know conditions and uh, we can use the if else statements to structure the flow of our program and now let's look into something else which is known as loops so we'll be doing some some nice questions in this session only and that will make it much more clearer we will actually be let's say creating a calculator app program okay in this session only so that is going to be a very nice uh, hands-on experience so i'm going to say conditionals file name conditionals another file name i'm going to create loops <coughs> all right so we have scanner i can say input is equal to new scanner we already have seen all these things and then i can say loop okay so what is a loop okay forget about scanner right now let's just do simple loop so i can say i can say something like um, what is a loop basically so loop is basically let's say the question is print numbers from one to five that's the question you can do it something like this one okay two three four five okay otherwise if someone asks you hey uh print hello world five times so you can do something like this hello world okay five times means copy it five times imagine someone asked you do a particular task 10,000 times would you write it 10,000 times no right so if there's a few tasks that you want to do again and again in, in like a loop for example print 1 to 10 numbers display all the you know iterate over a particular data type or uh, take inputs while the user does not press x which is something we'll do later on so in that case you can do something like you can use loops for that and there are three types of loops we'll be looking into first one being for loop and we'll also be seeing when to use which loop so for loop syntax is So the syntax is something like this for brackets this you have your body like whatever you want to do how many times you want to do it initialization condition and increment decrement okay so for example let's say the question is print numbers from 1 to 5 Okay, that is the question let's try to solve this using this in this syntax so for brackets and this will have our body numbers from 1 to 5 so i will initialize a number from 1 to 5 i can say int number is equal to 1 while this number is less than equal to 5 number plus plus or you can say number plus equal to 1 increment the number y1 i will tell you how this thing is working for every time this for loop runs, I will just print the number. 
Let's try to run this and then I'll explain how this is working. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see how this is working then. Let me add some nice indentation. Okay. Basically what is happening over here is that when this line of code is executed, int num is equal to one. Num is equal to one is going to be initialized. Okay. Uh, a variable num will be initialized to one. After that, it's going to check is one is num less than or equal to five. It's going to be like, yes, it is. Then it's going to run this particular command or whatever code that you have in the block. After that, it will increment it by whatever values you're putting. Okay. So it will increment it by one in this case. Then it will be now two. It will then ch check again is two less than or equal to five. It's going to be like, yes, it is. Okay. Print num. Num is two. So print two. If you then it, will, then it will be 3, then it will be like 3 is less than or equal to 5, yes it is, print 3, then it will be 4, so basically this happens only one time, after that it will have the check, run the body, increment, have the check, run the body, increment, have the check, run the body, increment, when the num value will be 6, then it's going to check, is 6 less than or equal to 5, it's going to be like, no it's not, hence it will not execute what is inside the function, the, the sorry, the for loop body and it will exit out of it. You can also do the debugging. Initially, you can say if I go in this, it now initialized the value num is equal to one and it's going to be like, okay, print it. Now it will go again over here. Like I said, you know, initialized for the very first time, check if it is less than five, print it. And now it's over here. You can see currently num value is one. When I go on the next step, it will increment it by one, two. And now it did the check again. Is two less than five? Yes, it is. Less than or equal to five? Yes, it is. Print it. Similarly, three. Similarly, four. Similarly, five. Now the value will be six. So going to be like, is six less than or equal to five? No, it's not. It will come out of the loop. Out of the loop. End of the program. Similarly, if I put something like increment in two. So first the value will be one. Then it will be three. Then it will be five. One, three, and five. Okay, so this is how you uh, print the numbers. So let's say you want to say print numbers from um, you know one to n, where n is something the user will input. So I'll just add my scanner over here. Scanner input is equal to new scanner system dot in. I can say int n is equal to <clears throat> in dot next int something we have already run before then I'll just run a for loop by the way in IntelliJ IDEA if you write for i it will create an iteration loop for yourself automatically it created <laughs> so I can say num starts from 0 should be less than equal to n num plus plus you can just start from 1 also because I want to input print numbers from 1 to n right let's say print number I'll just add a space over here so that I don't add it in a new line every time. And that is it. Let's try to run this. Let me hide this code. So it will ask for me to run a, to input a number, let's say 100. So all the numbers from 1 to 100, it will print. Okay, very basic stuff. Let's say I want to, let's say I wanted to um, print hello world n number of times. So I can just say, if you want to print hello world n number of times, hello world. Let's say I'll tell it to print hello world 10 times. 10 times it's printing hello world. Okay, that is the for loop. The next loop we'll be looking into is called a while loop. While loops. Syntax is something like this. Syntax is something like this. So you have the while loop condition over here. You write while, then you write the condition and then body. That's it. That is it. Let's try to convert this program of uh, one to five numbers into a while loop. So I can say int num is equal to 1. 
So basically, I'm converting this program into a while loop. So that is why you will be able to see the reference, like how this is getting converted to a while loop. Basically, the for loop we wrote before, we are converting it into a while loop. So I can say while. So basically, the initialization part, I'll just copy paste this for reference. So for the initialization part, that will come outside the while loop. This condition will now come inside the while loop. This body will come inside the body of the while loop. And this increment thing will also come inside the body of the while loop. That's it. Let me try to hide this thing. Let's try to run this. Oh, it's actually asking for an input. Let me also hide that. 1 to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. How this is working? Let's see. Debugging. So here, okay. So here it's saying num value is 1. And initialize that. Okay. So num is initialized to 1. Is 1 less than or equal to 5? It's saying it's true. Hence, it will go inside this while loop. It will print 1. And then it will increment the value of 1 by like plus 1 to it. It will now become 2. That is true. Num becomes 2. Is 2 less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. Print 2 and make it 3. 3 less than or equal to 5? Print 3, make it 4. Make it 5. Make it 6. Is 6 less than or equal to 5? No. Hence, it will not go inside the while loop. It will exit out of the while loop. Program over. Okay. So that's the while loop. Now, the question you may ask yourself is, how do we know when we, un when we need to use the while loop, when we need to use the for loop? You can use both of these anytime you want. Okay, it's totally up to your preference. One of the things that I would recommend, like uh, something that why these two exist, is because you need to run a while loop when you don't know how many times the loop is going to run. And run and use a for loop when you know how many times the loop is going to run. If the question is something like print the first 10 numbers, then you will use a for loop. If the question is something like keep taking input from a user till the user does not press X. Here, do you know how many times the loop will run? No, depends on the user till the user will not press an X that many times of amount like the loop will running. So in that case, use a while loop. One more loop is there known as a do while loop. Okay, let's see. So the next one is a do while loop. Syntax is something like this. Do this thing while condition. Okay, let's try it out. I'll also explain the difference between Okay, so let's say we take int n is equal to 1. I can say do print n and n plus plus while n is less than or equal to 5. I'll explain what the difference is. Don't worry. I think it's pretty obvious what it's doing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Why would we want to use a do while loop and when would we want to use a while loop? That is another good question. Let me just write the body syntax over here. Okay. So do while and while, the do while loop and the while loop have one difference in it. In the do while loop, the program is going to execute, the loop is going to execute at least once. At least once it will execute. So it will execute at least once. So for example, if I write something like, uh, you know, Let's say I remove this thing, all these things, and I just write print hello world. And here I write while n is not equal to 1. So here, even though n is equal to 1, this should not execute, but it will because first it will execute the body, then it will make the che checks. So basically, the idea is it will execute at least once. And after that, it will only execute when this while condition is true after that. So once it will always execute. Let's try it out. Prints hello world. So basically this is what happened. 
n is equal to 1 it will do this thing first it will print hello world after that it will check that again if you want to run this loop this condition should follow while n is not equal to 1 it will say n is equal to 1 hence loop will end okay so in cases in which you definitely have to have one time the loop running in that case you can use a do while loop for example if you want to say take input of so many numbers till the user input some other value like x or something okay in that case once the value will all obviously be input right the value will always be there like for the very first time that you can use a do while loop now let's try to solve some questions over here because questions are important in order to understand how these things are working internally so let's say we create a question like largest so you will be giving three numbers and let's say public static void main scanner input is equal to new scanner system dot in so basically you are going to input three numbers okay so i can say a b and c int a is equal to in dot next int int b is equal to in dot next int int c is equal to in dot next int three numbers are here question is find the largest of the three numbers how do we do that so let's look at how we are going to solve this problem you can also create a flow chart for it if you like but uh, imagine that you have three numbers let's say you know a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 and c is equal to 30 and you have to figure out which is the largest number from all these three numbers so one way we can do this we can let's say assume that this is the largest number okay we can take a maximum value we can say maximum is equal to let's say 10 then we are going to check this with b is b greater than maximum that the current maximum that i have is b greater than that it's going to be like uh, you know yes it is so in that case it's just going to say that uh, my maximum now is equal to b <coughs> then it's going to make another check if condition if c is actually greater than my maximum is 30 greater than my maximum which is currently now 20 it's going to be like yes it is then max is equal to 30 or c means 30 that is my answer if you aren't able to see here you can see there we go cool so let's try to code this example so here in this case i will say let's say int maximum is equal to a then i can say if b is greater than maximum i can say maximum is equal to b otherwise i can say if let's say c is greater than maximum max is equal to c and then i output say maximum let's give it three numbers 10 20 30 30 is the maximum one let's give it something else 56 12 79 79 is the maximum one 33 789 65 789 is the maximum one that is what is happening it's saying initially let's say it will say let's let's try to you know run this code only debug it and see how this thing is working input cool a is equal to 33 so it's saying max is equal to 33 okay currently max is equal to 33 then it's checking hey is b greater than max maximum value it's going to be like yes it is then the new maximum value is going to be b now the new maximum value is going to be 789 that is true you can see maximum is now 789 it's not 33 anymore now it's checking again is c greater than the maximum value is uh, 65 greater than the maximum value which is 789 no it's not hence this will not execute this will this if condition will be false this will be false so this will not execute hence the output will be 789 program ends 
very simple stuff and one more thing like before we move on to the next question um there are many ways to solve one pro one one problem okay there can be many ways if you don't want to take the like the you know the maximum one as uh, as a or whatever you can say initially something like let's say let me just uh, let me just copy this thing okay let me or let me just comment this out no copy i can say let's say another method int max is equal to 0 and here you can say that uh, if a is greater than b max is equal to a otherwise max is equal to b so now in this maximum value it will actually store either a or b and in the next line you can say if c is greater than max max is equal to c same thing here it's actually trying to suggest us intellij is saying you can optimize this loop ah yeah you can use a maximum uh, the ma math dot max call that is also something you can do so basically math uh, you know the math class has something like this so if i comment this out you can say my int max is equal to math dot max a and b so it's basically going to return the two the maximum value from these two okay so this is going to contain the maximum value of these two and i can again pass this in math dot max for c okay so this is basically saying uh, basically if i do math dot max let's say 34 and 7 57 so it's going to print 57 let me comment this out it will give an error because uh, did not comment out this thing now it should run 57 that is what math.max is doing okay if i replace this with my variable max take the inputs now let's try to run this if i give three numbers 10 30 27 it will print 30 why because it will it is it is first going to say math dot max of 27 and whatever the maximum value is of 10 and 30 so it's going to be like math dot max of 27 comma 30 means 30 that's my answer now let's go into the next question let's do something let's say we input a character a letter and basically any an, an alphabet and it will tell us whether the alphabet is uppercase or lowercase let's try to make that program that'd be pretty pretty nice so you can say type check or something like car uh, case check or whatever okay case check let's start it void main and here i can say scanner input is equal to new scanner system dot in let's take a character input there is no such thing as in dot next char <laughs> so for that we are going to have to take a string input and take the first letter of it okay so that's the way to take characters sorry uh, char ch is equal to in dot next dot trim dot char at zero what am i doing over here trim basically means that uh, i'll just hide this for now let's say i say print in dot next this is just going to print the next word so if i just run this it's just going to print the next word okay it will take the next word over here and it will it will print it in this uh, function only so i can say hello so it will print hello nothing new over here what is dot trim dot trim basically means remove all the extra spaces that are at the end of these words so i can say if i take uh, you know next uh, for uh, let's say if i do trim over here now let's say if I print it. Let me do a let me do a space. Hello. So you can see extra space was removed. Okay, because that is what not what we want. We basically want that. Okay, we are going to be inputting a number like um, a character basically, not a number. So I can say I'm I'm going to be inputting uh, k. So this k is actually a string input. You cannot take like a char input. It will convert it into char when you use this method called char at zero 
don't worry about this right now because string is a separate module of this course so we'll look into it later on like what is a caret and everything but if, in case in short if you want to understand it's not that complicated this is a string char at basically means give me the character at this index of the string string you can imagine it as a character array array is actually the next topic so it will be much more clearer then but uh, in arrays index starts from zero so if i'm saying something like uh, hello okay so if i'm saying let's say string word is equal to something like hello and then i print word dot char at zero this is going to print print which is the character at this words zeroth index h it will print h h which is the character at uh, index number 2 so 0 1 2 l it will print l okay so this char at is actually returning a character type you can see over here character type okay so if it is returning a character type then we already have learned about data you know data types so i can store it in a character type that's why it's working now i will input a character and it will be stored in the ch input let's say l l type character question is you need to check whether this is lower case or upper case so the ch and everything you can use like the ascii values and stuff but we can also do something like if because since it's a character i can directly compare it with uh, the values of uh, you know lower case a and lower case uh, z if it lies in the range of that because in the type section we saw that it actually converts it into like you know checks when integers so we already saw that if you haven't check out the link in the description below we have an entire entire session on that on types and everything and how these compare this is greater than equal to a and ch is less than equal to z basically this is something we did not cover before and so basically if you want to add two conditions like both of these conditions need to be true you can use the and 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 operator okay so it will only be true if this is true and this is true okay if it's, if it's, if we, if we go into our conditionals again and if i just hide this thing So you can see multiple. I can say if let's say let's say int a is equal to ten and int b is equal to twenty. So I can say if a is equal to equal to ten and b is equal to equal to twenty. So is a equal to ten? Yes, it is. B equal to twenty? Yes, it is. It will print. if you say or you can also add or or basically means either one of these should be true so if i make this one false so even though a is equal to 10 b is not equal to 20 it will still run because this is or means any one of these to be true we will do this in detail when we do bitwise operators okay these are bitwise operators we'll do it in detail hello world okay we'll do it in detail there's a separate uh, section for this and if i do something like um, Okay, so you you already learned about and and or. There's a double equal to. We basically compares the value of this, and there's one more called uh, not equal to. If a not equal to thirty five, print this. Is a equal to thirty five? No, it's not. So hence this is true. A should not be equal to thirty five. That is true. A is not equal to thirty five. A is ten. Hence it will print hello world. So you can multiple you, know, you can add so many if so many so many conditions you can add in just one single if condition okay like we are adding two over here if a is greater than a the value like if it, if it lies between the range of capital small a and small z i can say print lower case otherwise i can say print upper case Let's try to run this program. You can add any number. Oh, sorry, any letter H, lowercase letch. If I add something like capital H, uppercase. Simple stuff. All right. Cool. Let's move on to the next question. 
Now let's look into another problem, which is the Fibonacci problem. So what are Fibonacci numbers? Fibonacci numbers are basically, let's say they start by 0 and 1. Starts from 0 and 1. Which is, let's say the 0th Fibonacci number, first Fibonacci number. And the series then continues by adding the previous two numbers. So basically the next number is going to be what? Sum of the previous two numbers, 0 plus 1, 2, or 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 comes over here. The next number is going to be the sum of the previous two numbers, 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 will come over here. Next will be the sum of previous two numbers, 2 plus 1, 3. 3 will come over here. Next will be the sum of the previous two numbers, 3 plus 2, 5. 5 will come over here. Next will be the sum of previous two numbers, 5 plus 3, 8. Then 8 plus 5, 13 and so on. That is what we want to do. Okay, so we have to write a code for this. So basically what is happening is that um, we will be having the first number as this one, like the zero, the, the first one number we can say A is equal to 0, B is equal to 1 and we will be having a number N is equal to let's say, let's say 7. So the, the question is find the nth Fibonacci number. So basically the 0th, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th number, 7th number. So the answer for this should be equal to 13. If I say give me the 6th Fibonacci number, answer should be 8. That is what we are going to do. And here we know how many times a loop is going to run. We know we need to find the nth number. We will have the value of n because we will input it. Hence, we will use a for loop for this. So we will initialize these two variables. Then we will use a for loop till, you know, till it runs till like seven or whatever. And uh, then basically we will just uh, keep on adding and updating these two values. For example, the next number will be a plus b, which is equal to one comma. A will then be replaced with uh, b and b will be replaced with this. So a then will be one, b will be one. Next will be one plus one, two. A will be replaced with the, the next one, this one. And B will be, uh, let me make it much more clearer by making a table. Let's make it much more clearer by making a table. So A comma B, initially it's zero, it's one. And this is my series that is currently ongoing. Okay. So now when I do zero plus one, it will be one. And B will come over here. And the new B is going to be this thing that I have just added. 1 plus 1 then will become 2. B will come over here. This will be the one that I have currently added. 2. 2 plus 1. 3. 2 will come over here. And 3 will come over here. 2 plus 3. 5. See, very simple. 3 will come over here. And 5 will come over here. 5 plus 3. 8. It will keep on going on, going on, going on. Something like this. Let me just, uh, let me just show you the... You know, in case you are unable to see the, now I think it might be visible. Like this. This one. Now previously I mentioned like when you know how many times a loop is running, you can use a for loop. But one more case in which you might want to use a while loop is when the code is looking cleaner. Sometimes the code will look much more cleaner when you're using let's say a while loop over a over a for loop so here in this case i'll just add a i'll just add a scanner class in is equal to new scanner system dot in and here i'll just input my nth fibonacci number next int <clears throat> okay so now the initial ones that we'll be having the one that you know the the, the two numbers one and zero I can add is at let's say int uh, uh, p is equal to 0 means previous and int i means the current index equal to 1. We already have the first two numbers. So our count can start from let's say 2. Count is equal to 2. Okay. And then I can say while count is less than equal to n. You want the nth Fibonacci number? Okay. So while count is less than equal to n, what do we need to do? we need to add uh we need to basically the answer in the end is going to lie in the ith like the nth fibonacci number right so that will be i so here uh how do we make sure that that happens 
we need to add the previous two numbers that is what we want to do so basically i can take a temporary variable temporary variable of i because this temporary variable now previous is actually going to be equal to you know when we were doing in the previous example we were doing this will come over here b will come to a means the new a is going to be equal to b that is what we're going to do over here okay so if i have something like this i can say that um, you know p will be equal to i previously but why am i taking this i in a temporary variable because we want to make sure that uh, we want to add these two numbers right we want to say i plus p i can store this in i only means the next number is i is equal to i plus p that is it <laughs> count plus plus that's it that's my fibonacci number if you don't want to like do this is i n uh, stuff so i can say this is a or i can just write it in the you know format of what we what, which we wrote in in the um program as well so i can say this is let's say my a just renaming it to b okay so here i'm saying basically if you want to say next is equal to b plus a okay so the third fibonacci number it will be 1 plus 0 and then i am just updating the values the a is going to become b that is true because temp actually stores the value of b why have i taken temp because if i do a is equal to b over here this will not be the value of b that it had previously this will be the one that is now updated that is why i am taking a previous value over here okay try to run this on the paper it is exactly the same thing as we were doing in the previous example and i literally ran it like line by line and that is exactly what it's doing so this is the next number and then i'm just i'm just updating a and b a is being updated to b that is correct a is being updated to b b is being updated to whatever next number i have added that is true b is being updated to whatever next number we have added in the end i'll just print b we were saying seventh fibonacci number it should give us uh, in an example we had what did we have for seventh fibonacci number 13 we are getting 13 6 fibonacci number should give me 8 we are getting 8 okay cool <clears throat> that is that is uh, pretty much about it and uh, we will learn more about like the time complexity and everything when we actually do time complexity we'll also solve this in many other ways i'll also teach you how to find the fibonacci nh fibonacci number without using any loops in just one single step i'll be able to you will be able to find the nh fibonacci number that is going to come in some bit more advanced topic which is in during the space and time complexity analysis so stay tuned for that let's look at the next question now let's say for the next question we say something like um, there's a number given to you let's say number n is equal to 1 3 8 5 7 5 um, 7 8 7 9 this is a number given to you okay and you basically need to find how many times the number 7 is occurring in this number. So the answer should be 3. How do we do this problem? Pause this video and then figure it out and uh, now we'll look into the solution. Okay. So basically the idea to do this thing is whenever you get such questions where you actually have to deal with individual digits, you are going to have to check individual digits for you know obvious reasons because you are checking individual digits now how can we get individual digit digits from this there can be many ways you can convert this entire data type to a string data type and then you can iterate upon it or you can do something much more simpler if you take the remainder of any number by 10 you are actually going to get the last value you are getting the last value let's check it out if i say let's say n is equal to 1389 and if i divide it by 10 so i can say 1389 divided by 10 so i can say 10 into 138 gives me 1380 remainder is 9 isn't this same as the last digit <laughs> hence n modulo 10 is going to give you the last digit remainder of that number with 10 will give you the last digit so here we can do something like if i try to you know take a smaller example in order to make things clear 
so i can say let's say n is equal to 1 3 8 3 9 count the number of threes okay so in this case the answer should be 2 let's uh, try to see this how this works so basically i'm going to say while you know n is greater than 0 um i can say you know my remainder is going to be equal to n divided by 10 then i'm going to check this is actually the last digit okay so i'll check is my remainder equal to 3 if it is then i'll say count plus plus let's say initially count is equal to 0 okay and in any case i'm just then going to reduce this number as well so for example i have something like n is equal to 1 3 8 3 9 remainder will be let's say 9 now i need to actually remove this 9 from this number as well right because then i will check for this thing 1 3 8 3 how do i do this i can just say n is equal to n divided by 10 <laughs> that is true because if 1 3 8 9 1 3 8 3 9 i divided by 10 it will give me 1383 3. okay then for 1383 3, I will check modulo 10 is uh, this. so basically this is what I'm doing basically it will say 1383 3, 9 it will say modulo 10 going to give me 9 and let's take a count over here so count initially 0 is 9 equal to 3 no it's not then uh, I'm just gonna not increment the count variable and I'm just going to divide it by 10 so now if I divided by 10 this will be 1383 now remainder of 10 will give me 3 3 equal to 3 yes count will be 1 this will be now reduced to 138 remainder is 8 nope it will now reduce to 13 last digit remainder 3 yep count increased to 2 this will be 1 last digit 1 equal to 3 no it's not it will then be again reduced to 0 because 1 divided by 10 will give me 0 in the integer Okay, since we're storing it in integer, it will be like is 0 0.1. Points will be cancelled out, only 0 will be there. While n is greater than 0 is the condition, hence this will terminate and our answer will be available to us. I can say n is equal to n divided by 10. That is it. Let's try to code this solution. So if we're trying to code this solution, we can also do some really optimized things like you know bit masking and shift operators and everything. We'll do that. We'll do the same questions later on. Count nums. Public static word main. I'm not taking a let's say I'm not taking an input, I can just say four five five three five three six or whatever. Then I can say while n is greater than zero, similarly similarly the same thing we did in the previous, you know, and the, the drawing part. I can say my count is equal to zero. Initially, in the end, my answer is going to be equal to what? Count. And here I'm just going to say int remainder is equal to n modulo 10 if remainder is equal to equal to 5 count plus plus n is equal to n modulo or n divided by 10 you can also write something like this to make it shorter it has two fives so answer should be two that is correct <laughs> let's add one more five over here answer should be three Let's add no fives over here. Answer should be zero. Zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. So very simple solution. And now let's look into the next problem. Now let's try to do another important question. Let's say you are given a number that is, let's say, question that uh, number is given to you that says the number is two, three, five, nine, seven. The answer should be the reverse of this number. So the answer should be 79532 pause this video think about it and uh, it's going to use the same remainder approach and then watch the rest of the video to get the answer okay i hope you tried it out and let's see how we're going to do this so basically the idea is same the same while loop that we used before we're going to use the same thing so basically i'm going to say that uh, my result initially is equal to zero before i write the code let me show you how it's going to work so basically the idea is i'm going to take the remainder every time 
while the number is greater than zero, I'm going to take the remainder. I'm going to add it in my answer. So initially, let's say the answer is zero. Okay. And my number, like the entire thing is over here, two, three, five, seven, nine. When I take the remainder for the very first time, my remainder will be seven. I'll add it to my answer. Answer will become seven. Okay. Then I'll take the remainder again. It will be now be nine. Before adding, this is the same thing we were doing previously. Only one extra step is needed. When you are adding this number in your answer, make sure you do, you have to basically add the number in your answer so that it you, it should be like 79 over here, right? So basically you need to shift this seven towards the right, so towards the left. So what you need to do is, you have let's say seven over here, okay? And you have nine over here that needs to come over here now. How do we make sure nine comes over here? We can just basically, can we not do, if I do something like seven into 10 plus nine, what is this going to give me? 70 plus nine, 79. Let's say I take another number five now. If I do again, now it's 79. So 79 into 10 plus five, which is 795. <laughs> Make sense? Then three. So 795 into 10 plus three, which is 7953. Then again, last remainder two, 7953 into 10 plus two, which is 79532. Last remainder then now be zero. Isn't this my answer? Okay, very simple solution. Same remainder, same dividing. Only thing, we are just going to multiply the answer by 10 and add the remainder in order to get the answer at that particular point. When the loop finishes, this will be my entire answer. Let's try to code this program. Okay, so let me create another file. I can say reverse static void main int number is equal to something like this random number. Then I'm going to say what? Int answer is equal to initially zero. In the end, I'm just going to print the answer. And same thing that we did previously. While number is greater than zero, int remainder is going to be n modulo 10, n divided by 10 equal to not n, sorry, num, num modulo 10, num is dividing by, num is then getting divided by 10 for the same reasons in the previous example. And I'm just going to add it in my answer. So answer is equal to answer into 10 plus remainder. That is it. So simple, so simple. 97482 should be answer. 97482. How simple is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 should give me 6. 654321 6,54,312 Very simple stuff Okay, cool Let's look at the last question which is going to combine all these things together which is known as building a calculator app Not an app but a program Calculator program So let's try to make a calculator program So I can say calculator and then public static void main scanner in is equal to new scanner System.in. If you're just watching this video, make sure you check out the playlist. All these things have been covered over there. What is scanner and everything. Okay. So the idea is that uh, we're going to take input from user till user does not press X or X. Okay. Till that time, we are going to keep taking like input from the user. First, we are going to take the operation from the user and like plus minus into or divide and uh, Whenever the user inputs X, the program will stop. So basically I can create an infinite while loop over here that while true, okay, while true, char ch, take the, take the character input, take the operator as input. So I'm just going to say char ch is equal to what? Uh, or my operation, my operation uh, operator in, is equal to what? In dot next, no, 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 next dot trim dot carat zero now basically i'm just going to make a check i'm basically going to check that uh, if my operator is equal to equal to you know plus or my operator is equal to equal to minus or my operator is equal to equal to multiply or my operator is equal to equal to divide because if you add something as an op uh, if you add this as a character 
oh this can also be a, a you know remainder thing so i can say or if my operator is equal to equal to modulo you can also you know get very but if you add something like and that should not give you any answer right we're not using bitwise operators and if you add something like dollar okay so what what is that dollar dollar is nothing so that is why we are taking only these five basic operators okay now what we're going to do is we're going to input two numbers okay so basically we'll say int num1 is equal to in dot next int in number two is equal to in dot next int taking two numbers now now i basically need to make a check so basically i can say that if operator is equal to equal to addition then in that case i can just say print or not print i can just say i take my result over here somewhere i can say my int answer is equal to zero and in the end i can just say print answer ah makes sense because uh i haven't added like uh <laughs> the condition to break this while loop right now we'll do that because there's an infinite while loop and we have to make a condition to break it which is uh whenever the user inputs x because currently that there, there's no condition for that and it will keep on running infinitely hence we need to put a condition for that as well but anyway in this case i can say answer is equal to um what num1 plus num2 that is it then i can say just copy paste this if the operator is equal to equal to minus answer is equal to num1 minus num2 if operator is equal to equal to you know multiplied i can say answer is equal to num1 into num2 if operator is equal to equal to divide i need to basically here make a check okay i need to make a check that uh, you know if number 2 is not equal to 0 because you cannot divide by 0 then i can say something like answer is equal to num1 divided by num2 okay and only thing remaining now is something like modulo so here i can just add answer is equal to num1 modulo num2 okay now the last thing is that uh, if this is not the case okay if these are not the operators then uh, basically it means that you input something like uh, x so in that case you can say something like um, you know here i can add so it's going to take a character input if it is not in this it basically means it's either an x or something else so i can say else if operator is equal to x or operator is equal to capital x break the while loop otherwise it's let's say not a particular operator or not a you know either x or capital x in that case you can just print invalid operation something like that let's try it out let me add some let's add some like uh commands so or like the, the messages as over here as well you can say enter the operator new line let's say enter two numbers this out enter two numbers okay mm, new line over here let's try to run this <clears throat> enter an operator let's say plus enter two numbers three and four hmm. it should actually display the answer as well at every point <clears throat> okay so basically i can display the answer i forgot to display yeah, this will not uh, yeah this, this is yeah 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 can display the answer over here 
after every operation basically it was outside the while loop so uh, it will only display like one answer but i need to display at every point of time don't think i need the extra lines over here so i can just remove the new line statements okay let's try it out enter the operator plus enter two numbers three and four answer is seven it is asking for the operator again because you can see uh, there's an infinite while loop so infinite while loop it says you know enter the operator it's saying okay input it if it lies over here cool and then it's going to ask for you know uh, it's going to print the answer and then ask for the operator again if it lies over here cool because i initially mentioned there are three conditions one if condition else if condition and else condition only one of these is going to run so this normal one is running this break will never happen this will only happen when you input x then it will print the answer take the input again print the answer take the input again when you press x let's say i take star and i add 6 and 2 should give me 12 12 now let's say i input x program over <laughs> so when i input x it's going to say does x lie over here does this condition satisfy x it's going to be like no it does not then it's going to check if else else if operation is equal to it's going to be like yes it is break outside the while loop okay i can also try some other operator like this saying invalid operation enter the operator again okay that's basically the idea very simple stuff you can try to make a flowchart of this if you want it's going to be a pretty big but it's going to be good practice and just a lot of copy pasting over here and uh, yeah simple simple calculator program make sure you check out the links in the description i'll be uploading the assignment and notes and everything and uh, in the next session we'll be doing arrays if you have if you are new then all the videos are available in the playlist below in order so if you're looking for videos in order check out the links in the description make sure you like share and subscribe share with your friends we're going to be doing some amazing work like in this session i did so many questions we'll be doing so many questions for every other topic from the next session we'll be doing arrays which is going to be bringing us very many amazing things sorting searching and you know interview problems as well so make sure you subscribe and uh, i'll see you in the next video Thanks.